And sub-zero temperatures and frozen screens right here on Glacier TV. I'm Yoni Beckman and this is Victory Lane Racing and round three of the series at Michigan International Speedway. We're currently running in qualifying. Remaining few minutes still uh, in qualifying session and at the moment Scott Eckridge is the one uh, having the pole position here with the 39.377 and Eric Hoff right behind him five hundredths of a second slower. Sam Watson currently third, 39.718 and another five hundredths of a second to Brandon E. Williams in the number 24 car. And uh, we're, we're gonna have 45 laps around this racetrack. And um, should be a pretty interesting race to watch. And uh, we, we uh, last uh, last race at Atlanta Speedway and the race before that at the Daytona showed uh, quite amount of caution periods and uh, funny crashes, not so funny crashes. So will be interesting to see how this race plays out. So 45 laps around Michigan Speedway. And uh, if we get caution free, it should be a sprint race of about 25 minutes approximately. But if not, uh, it's going to be a slightly longer night for us. So currently, the qualifying session has uh, finished and we're currently getting ready to grid. So the final positions, uh, if we go through the grid right now, so the pole position, as I said earlier, goes to Scott Eckridge with the 39.377, Eric Hoff in second, Sam Watson in third, Brandon E. Williams fourth, Bla Blake Bryant fifth, Sam Adams sixth, Skylar Lewis seventh, Christopher Schella eighth, Corey Card ninth, Ryan Wells 10th, David Forge 11th, and the last place on the grid 12th position goes to Shane Duggerty, and he did not get a qualifying, uh, well at least incident free qualifying lap, so he will be starting at the back of the grid. But uh, uh, Shane Duggerty has been, uh, has not been by far the slowest person uh, in the series, so be expecting him, uh, early rush from him around this racetrack to launch his way uh, back towards the lead of the pack. Meanwhile, David Forge, uh, currently 11th, uh, said before the race that he's uh, he's not so happy with the current setup of the car, so we'll be interested to see how his race pace uh, progresses up <laughs> once uh, we start uh, the, the uh, lap warm-up lap or the pace lap, and it, at least two cars uh, getting it a bit sideways, number 14 of Eric Hoff and 28 of Sam Watson, Spinning the rear tires, trying to build heat, heat into the tires, and uh, quite a surprising solution to see because uh, usually the uh, the colder the tires, the better the lap time. So I should, I at least uh, would not be getting any uh, extra heat into the tires. So currently, currently we are on the pace lap, and um, as we see the two teammates, numbers 14 and 70 forming the front of the grid, so their car is uh, set up to, uh, to the max according to the uh, initial qualifying, because uh, the, the duo of Eckridge Huff was a uh, full three tenths of a second faster than the third place of Sam Watson, so um, uh, this track is not like Daytona, even even if it's just a uh, super speedway and lots of high speed uh, going through around the racetrack, it still has uh, uh, braking spots uh, or um, depending on the setup, you have to break into the corners or just lift early and let the car flow through the corners. So, uh, even though this is not a, exactly a tandem racing track like Daytona where you can just uh, flat floor it uh, following, right, um, following the other guy in front of you, it should still uh, give, give us a pretty solid team working. Uh, if you just stand behind the person's draft, you can increase your uh, straight line speeds quite a bit. As we get ready, um, get ready for the green flag, and the green flag flies. And uh, let's see who's going to get the fastest start around here. Green flag is in the air, and the front runners, Eckridge Huff, get a good start. And number th uh, number 28 car started third. Sam Watson nails his spot in third. Oh! Just as I say that, the 09 car started fifth, gets it 
uh, has to lift quite a bit in the inside line of coming out of turn two and drops a couple of positions there. So I think it's uh, eighth position right now for Blake Bryant in the 09 car. It's currently uh, currently following the 09 here and. Uh, uh, so far, no no early cautions here, and uh, everyone seemed to be giving themselves a very good, very good amount of space right here. Unlike the Daytona and Atlanta Speedway, where we saw lots of guys going three wide into the corners in very early laps, but still good clean start from everyone. And uh, single file forming up here. Uh, currently, Scott Eckridge, the pole sitter, still. Uh, Maintaining the lead with Eric Hoff uh, one tenth behind him, Sam Watson in third, Sam Adams fourth, Brandon E. Williams fifth, Christopher Shella in sixth. So uh, Christopher Shella from eighth, eighth to sixth, uh, basically the only guy gaining positions right now, and uh, all the others just settling into the groove, getting into their rhythm, just feeling out how the car feels. As the uh, Sam Watson to 28 car is just going outside of Eric Hoff into turn one. Very high line for uh, number 28 car, and let's see if you can main up, maintain the pace right here. You can use very high line here at Michigan Speedway, but you have to be have to watch out for the um, treacherous turn two when you get to the exit. The the, to, the corner seems to just block your way uh, right out of, right out of your wheel, so you really have to watch yourself coming out of turn two. But uh, yeah, tw the number 28 car slingshots his past. Slingshot his way around uh, Eric Hoff the inside in the turn three gets a very good run out of, out of turn two so excellent passing there by Sam Watson gets a second place in the early stages of the race currently in the fourth lap of the race. Meanwhile Scott Eckridge has uh, pulled quite a bit of gap uh, while these guys were battling for position. Uh, Scott Eckridge pulled a point nine of a second within the first three laps now meanwhile uh, Eric Hoff is trying to get his vengeance back going into uh, into turn three, uh, two wide going into turn three right now. Meanwhile, following the zero 09 car, Blake Bryant battling with uh, Christopher Shella, and this should be a battle for sixth position, I I think. Yep. And uh, two wide going uh, along the main straightaway going into turn two. Christopher Shella, uh, sorry, turn one. Christopher Shella takes the higher line, has a, has the opportunity to slingshot below the zero 09 car out of turn two, and he does, but. Doesn't seem, doesn't quite get the draft, uh, good a slingshot coming out of turn two, but still an excellent, excellent attempt. Still, still zero two car of Christopher Shella just uh, trying to follow up uh, actually uh, Blake Bryant, who managed to get past uh, from the inside line. Sorry for that, I was just, <laughs> I just. Focus so much on the moment, I actually forgot uh, forgot what to watch. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Sam Watson uh, with the 28 number 28 car is uh, trying to uh, catching uh, Sam Adams with uh, last lap was uh, pretty similar, I would say. Yeah, not not much difference between these two cars. And uh, meanwhile, car in front of him, Eric Hoff managed to pull uh, three tenths out of uh, number 27 car. And meanwhile, Scott Eckridge got another two, three tenths faster than Eric Hoff, so Scott Eckridge is flying in the early stages of this race. 1.7 seconds between Scott Eckridge and Eric Hoff right now. So. Currently the, 20, currently the 28 car of, uh, oh, they, there's a, one of the cars gets very, very close to the wall. I think it was the number 24 car of uh, Brandon E. Williams. Uh, gets uh, very sideways out of turn two and uh, raises the wall quite a bit, but doesn't seem to get that much damage. Still, uh, still seems to find his way around the corners normally, so uh, no wheel damage or anything. Let's see if it affects his uh, front straight line speed. Uh, just to, just to re remind everyone that uh, since it's a super speedway track, you don't have to get that much uh, bump in order to bend your uh, quarter panels and stuff uh, or similar. And once you get get your car bent just just a fraction, uh, 
uh, it does affect your straight line speeds quite a bit, especially if you're in the lead of the pack. Uh, your car slows down a couple of miles per hour, and that's insane amount on this track, so you lose a ton of space there. As we see the uh, 28 car, Sam Watson still trying to find his way around. Sam Adams get, got very low into turn three, but wasn't able to execute the pass right there. But still, uh, Sam Watson sh seems to be... Uh, uh, seems to catch Sam Adams pretty easily, but every time he tries to find a way around uh, Sam Adams, he just seems to... Either his car is not function, uh, working that well... Um, working that well the inside roof, or then he's, uh, he's simply un uh, uncomfortable with the draft. Meanwhile, behind these guys, um, 09 car of uh, Blake Bryant... Uh, so sorry... Um, yeah, 09 car Blake Bryant uh, gets uh, too wide go uh, with the uh, 24 car Brandon E Williams for fifth position, and uh, Blake manages to get that spot out of uh, out of Brandon. And the number two car of uh, Skylar Lewis uh, tries to use that as an advantage, and he does. And let's see if Christopher Shelland, the 02 car, also has a, uh, has the advantage of. Uh, over the 24 count he does, so 24 loses four places, or sorry, three places in a, uh, three quarters of a lap. So that was not the f best best possible lap for Brandon E. Williams. He finds himself, I believe, in eighth position as they come across the finish line right here. Yep, eighth place for Brandon Will e. Williams, and he was fifth. So he's gonna have fight his way. He's gonna have to fight his way back around. Uh, still for still Sam Adams and Sam Watson. Sam Adams and Sam Watson are still fighting uh, for position three. And the 24 car again has a look at the inside line, and his car seems to find its way pretty well around the inside line. And this, uh, Christopher Shella does not give up. He, they go too wide through uh, turn four. Now the main straightaway, and Christopher Shella carries much more more speed through the turn. And uh, Brandon either has to lift off, or then his car just got a little bit sideways as you uh, go that low uh, through t turns three and four. So, 24 car Brandon E. Williams unable to execute that pass, so Shella remains in seventh place. And uh, meanwhile, in front of him, Skylar Lewis and Blake Bryant for fifth and sixth. Uh, Blake at least seems to be uh, escaping a little bit from Skylar Lewis in sixth position. Meanwhile, Christopher. Um, Seem to have a pretty good run coming out of out of uh, turn two and gets a good, pretty good run on uh, coming out of turn four on number two car Skylar Lewis. Let's see if he's gonna drop to the inside line coming to turn one. Does uh, does it look like it? Just gives a little bit of peak, but doesn't seem no. Actually, the zero two car goes so high into turn one that it uh, actually gives the option for Christopher to dive in. Very high side line choice uh, for the for the two car. Meanwhile, the zero two car sticks to the inside line. Uh, as you can see, the two car gets a better um, carries more speed coming out of turn two. So he manages to keep his position. And uh, again, when they go into turn three, two car takes a high side line, and Christopher Shella manages to dive in. Good fight going on. This is the battle for sixth place, and uh, Christopher Shella. Doing everything he can to just find his way around uh, Skylar Lewis, and uh, n this time he seemed to have nailed it because he they're side by side going in the middle of the turn, and he should get a pretty good run, and he, unless he gives him too much space coming out of the turn. Yep, they're side by side, still coming the back straight away, and uh, now Christopher Shella surely is going to have a, have the uh, superior line going into turn three, and he does so. Job well done for Christopher Shella. He now finds himself in sixth place. Meanwhile, in the lead, Scott Eckridge has pulled a 3.6 second lead over Eric Hoff uh, with the Sam Adams uh, two and a half seconds behind Eric Hoff. Sam Watson behind Sam Adams in fourth place. Blake Bryant in fifth, and Christopher Shella, made it, having made that pass, is now in sixth. Skylar Lewis in seventh. Brandon Williams eighth. David Forge ninth. Ryan Wells 10th, Corey Card 11th, and Shane Duggar the, uh, the last car on the grid and on the track in 12th position. And David Forge, who started this race in 11th position, is now cl uh, climbed his way up into 9th. So even though his car is, uh, he said he was uh, uncomfortable with their setup, at least uh, it's not the slowest setup around the track. Uh, so 
David has found has found his way past the, at least two cars, and the next one on his hit list will be the uh, 24 car of Brandon E. Williams, and uh, they're currently lapping identical lap times, 300th of a second slower than uh, Brandon E. Williams was David Forge in that lap. So uh, the field is settling. Uh, quite nicely as uh, we're still full green with 16 laps to, uh, in the books and or 16th lap in the books and uh, this has been a quite a long green period uh, comparing to the other our other two uh, races we had this season uh, in the Daytona and Atlanta you, we used to we got used to like having five six seven green laps and then a caution so very very clean racing with the, with these uh, with these 12 runners So Sam Watson currently in fourth position, chasing down the uh, third place man of Sam Adams, and still these this, these two guys can't get uh, can't get separated from from each other. Sam Adams two thousandths of a second faster in that last lap. Let's see this time by now it's two hundredths of a second faster. So these guys lapping very much identically and. Um, uh, unless you're uh, that, uh, unless you're very comfortable uh, around the corners, following uh, right behind uh, the front car, it does give you a bit of little bit of problems because uh, once you go very close, you tend to miss the your uh, turning point, especially with turn three. Uh, if you miss your your uh, entry point and you your car is uncomfortable with the with a high groove, you tend to lose a quite a bit of ground, like three four tenths. Uh, during uh, between two corners, since you have to lift quite dramatically in order to avoid the outside wall coming into the D shape, and uh, still the 28 car uh, gets very close uh, when approaching turn one entry. But right when they when they travel through turn one and two, uh, the four, the 27 car seems to manages to pull just enough gap uh, to avoid uh, any uh, any possibility for the 20. Eight car to just sneak his way around the inside. So currently we're riding on board with the with the twenty eight car and. Uh, And still the same fight goes. Uh, still, same fight goes on. They ju they just cannot find uh, cannot settle their differences right now. But uh, so far, this is the closest fight uh, outside of the number zero two car and the two car. Christopher Schella, Skyler Lewis uh, for a sixth position, uh, separated by three tenths of a second. And. Uh, that seems to be uh, those two five battling duos seems to be the only entertainment around the racetrack as uh, 21st lap is uh, underway with the leaders and uh, Scott Eckridge is uh, coming towards the finish line to start the 22nd lap uh, so the race is already at midway point. So the 28 car is still trying to find his way around. Um, 27 car, Sam Adams and uh, Sam Watson. So the Sam, ba Sam, two Sams, still try to fight each other. And the 28 car now has a look at the inside line. But again, again, when they come out of turn four, he just does not seem to find the grip, or the car is just too loose, or uh, I don't know what. what the problem but every time he sees them a good run into turn three he just 
somehow forced to lift it, just the three or four car lengths and uh, as, again as they go into turn one again 28 car has a good run of it then he dives the inside line again the 27 car pulls the gap back so pretty interesting Mickey uh, uh, cat and mouse game they're playing it right here and uh, interested to see if it goes through like this to the uh, the first round of pit stops because uh, if I'm not mistaken the, uh, the pit window with these cars is about 35 laps around this racetrack so um, Will be interesting to see that these cars. These cars are going to need one pit stop uh, in this race, so we'll keep an eye out of um, who's going to pit and where. Naturally, I think everyone, since the uh, race is started with full tank of fuel, I think everyone's just waiting for that first possible caution, so they don't have to pit under green. Because if you pit under green and then you have a caution, then your your race is basically screwed because you have to you go to the back of the pack. And even if you get a wave wave around uh, one to go with one to, lap to go, you still you have to fight yourself uh, from the back all the way to the front. So that's not a, that, that's not something that uh, any of the drivers wish to happen. And uh, still, the 27 and 28 car fight goes on. And now the uh, 28 car is looking for the high side line. This time uh, will be interesting to see if his car works better. On the outside line, now he just makes a slingshot, dives right very deep out of turn turn two, and uh, gets seemed to get a pretty good run uh, run on uh, Sam Watson. Uh, sorry, Sam Adams here. Again, he's uh, side by side going into turn three, and again, 28 car seems to just dive in way too low, uh, which causes him to just drift uh, drift very high coming out of turn four. And if he wishes to avoid contact with the 27 car, he's just forced to lift. But now he's very much closer than uh, he has been in the previous laps, coming into turn one. But again, just no way around. This, uh, no way around. But um, good fighting going on between these two. Meanwhile, the, uh, in front of these two, the uh, Scott, Scott Eckridge, Eric Hoff, the two teammates, are just uh, flying away from these two. Uh, Scott Eckridge with uh, four four point four second lead over Eric Hoff and uh, Eric having three second lead over Sam Adams in third place. Uh, behind this two, the, uh, these two cars, the Blake Bryant in fifth place uh, is uh, a good two point nine seconds behind. And uh, behind Blake, uh, Christopher Shella and uh, Skyler Lewis actually caught Blake Bryant. We could actually uh, jump uh, with these the, uh, these guys fighting for places five, six, and seven. Uh, Blake. And leading the pack right here, uh, and some uh, <laughs> good fighting going on. Every everybody uh, in these three is trying to find their way around each other. And uh, this Blake Bryant being the faster of these three uh, on single, but uh, Christopher and Scholar doing a pretty good job every time of uh, just diving uh, below them. As we can see right here, the zero nine car of uh, Blake Bryan going to the high side line, the 0-2 car and the 2 car just working as a team as you can see a 2 car pulls to the inside line and this gives a better drafting for 0-2 now he j just switches to the high side line that no way around there Blake Bryan closes the door on the high side line to get a better entry into turn 1 so still no cautions in this race as we're on lap 28 at the moment so very very clean racing and uh, these uh, this is the battle for sixth place. So zero two car gets by the zero nine car of Blake Bryant. So Christopher Shella now up to up into fifth position. Christopher Shella. Christopher Shella. Uh, is uh, or I got out of mixed out of words here. Here, Christopher Shella in fifth, Blake Bryant now in sixth, and uh, the two cars, Skylar Lewis, the red and white car behind these uh, behind these two cars, uh, just desperately wants to find his way around Blake as soon as possible. If in case Christopher Shella is able to carry enough speed to just escape this pack, because once you get uh, above 0.6 of a second, uh, uh, it's it's very hard to maintain the draft anymore around this racetrack when it's uh, below 0.6 of a second you uh, the straight lines give you just enough amount of draft to just 
wh whether you might be slightly slower uh, on a single when you have when you have that draft you you're able to pull that 0.6 of a second down to 0.2 when you go into the turn so these two these two guys definitely don't want to let Christopher Shella escape there because uh, once you lose a draft and uh, you have a slower card it's a game over for you if it's uh, if it stays green like it has done right now we're way past the midway point of the race they're watching currently watching uh, VLR Victory Lane Racing Series um, race number three in Michigan International Speedway. I'm Yoni Beckman, and this is Glacier TV live broadcasting. Broadcasting for the first time for Glacier TV. Philip Diaz is uh, behind the camera, so uh, kudos to him for uh, joining the crew, and uh, wish, uh, we wish uh, all the best for him. And uh, so far, everything's uh, going smooth, both uh, behind the cameras and around the racetrack. As we're in the lap 31 right now, so 14 laps remaining in this race, and it uh, will be interesting to see if anyone's going to uh, when anyone's going to pit or if they're going to pit because because um, just thought brought to my mind that uh, since this is not an Impala A car, it's uh, interesting to see how much uh, the fuel window that these cars carry. I I really really doubt that they're able to go 45 laps without pitting. But if that's the case, then uh, what would be more uh, more pleasant than having a full green race for a uh, first time in this ra first time in this series would do <laughs> good for the image of the series because the last race in Atlanta showed uh, insane amount of cautions. Every time we had a restart, we had another caution following. But currently, uh, Scott Eckrich's lead for, from uh, 4.4 seconds has uh, decreased from 4.4 seconds down into 2.5 seconds. And now it's uh, down to 1.9 seconds. So Eric Hoff, the 14 car, is flying. And uh, Scott Eckrich is uh, lapping 41.3s. Meanwhile, er Eric Hoff in the 14 car is doing 40.7. So 0.6 of a second per lap. Eric is catching his teammate. Meanwhile, behind these two, the 27 and 28 car on screen right now. Jo Sam Adams and Sam Watson still cannot get, <laughs> get their differences settled. Currently, Sam Adams still able to defend uh, his position against jo Sam Watson here. But it uh, will be interesting to see in the lead uh, exactly what will happen. if Now, uh, Eric Hoff again snaps another 0.2 of a second from Scott Eckridge. So the gap is down to 1.7 seconds. Meanwhile, uh, another two tenths up uh, uh, between Sam Adams and Eric Hoff right here. And uh, behind these two, the Christopher Shella and uh, number two car of Skylar Lewis have actually managed to escape from Blake Bryant. Blake, Blake Blake's car is not seem to be does not seem to carry that much pace in the late stages of the race. Maybe he just maybe he just melted his tires a bit, or uh, maybe the car is just set up so wrong so that uh, his front tires are just slightly too much worn out. And uh, he would definitely be looking for a caution here so he could get fresh tires at least for the right side. But currently, Christopher Shella is 0-2 car, and um, Scarlett Roux is in the in the two car, fifth and sixth at the moment. Managed to uh, pull a bit enough gap to um, Blake Bryant to break the draft. You know, all the uh, two 27 and 28 cars still going side by side in the back straightaway. The 27, 28 car still uh, in the bottom groove, and again he loses the uh, just enough enough time. In my opinion, goes goes way too low into turn three and just loses that valuable one two tenths of a second because of that so still no difference between these two and now now because of that they have a point three of a second a second going over the finish line but still meanwhile in the in the lead uh, the battle for the victory is going to heat up because Eric Hoff, the 14 car, is uh, pulling 0.6 of a second again from Scott Eckridge. So uh, if we could move into the top two guys, uh, the number 70 car, we're currently on board with the number 70, I believe. Uh, sorry, not 17, the 14 car uh, currently running on board with Eric Hoff. And again, Eric Hoff na nails a 0.2 of a second away when the point gap is from 4.4 seconds now to 0 0.770 seconds so Eric Hoff is uh, looking very 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 strong to get the victory of the in this race even though I, I don't think since they're the teammates 
that they're going to risk, uh, risk uh, nailing themselves into the wall and uh, giving a free victory for Sam, Sam Adams or Sam Watson, depending on who's going to come out of those two. Deal side by side behind the uh, behind Eric Hoff, the uh, Sam Watson and Sam Adams are fighting, but. Uh, Let's see if when they cross the finish line now, Eric Scott Eckridge does a 41.0 and 40.949 for Eric Hoff. So again, tenth of a second away, and the gap is below 0.7 now. Meanwhile, they, this, this duo seems to have their cars set up perfectly around this racetrack because uh, in 38 laps of full green, we had 7.3 seconds between second and third place cars. So it does look like that uh, this race is uh, measured enough so that uh, these car guys seem to be able to finish the race with one tank of fuel simply following still the number 14 car of Eric Hoff in second position so uh, just running through the order uh, as we are on the 39th lap in this race so Six full laps remaining in this race, and uh, sorry, yeah, six and a half laps to go with Scott Eckridge the, uh, in your screen, the, the front car in your screen, leading the race with 0.5 of a second over Eric Hoff, the teammate. As now Eric Hoff dives to the inside into turn three, by the way. Let's see if uh, number 70 car is able to uh, carry more speed, which he does. The 70 car still ma maintains the lead, but uh, it looks like Eric Hoff is going to take the uh, be, be the victor here if it goes full green till the finish. Eric Hoff is simply flying compared to the leading car car here. Now Eric, uh, Eric takes the very high side line and no place for number 70 to cover that up. So nice nice work from Eric Hoff and just steals the uh, lead of this race from the uh, Scott, Scott Eckridge, the 70 car, who by the way uh, had the pole position uh, starting this race and uh, was leading the majority but now with six laps to go Eric Hoff has st stolen the lead. And uh, it doesn't pre sort of seemed like a, a little bit of team effort going into turn one because that gap just increased from like nothing to a few tenths of a second uh, between start finish line and turn one. But well, if if that's a team order, then it's a team order. But uh, I would I would rather wish that it's not. So uh, as I said, uh, behind these two, uh, Sam Adams still ca maintaining a third place from uh, Sam Watson. Running in fourth place, Christopher Schella behind them in fifth, Skyler Lewis in sixth, Blake Bryant seventh, David Forge eighth, Corey Card ninth, Ryan Wells tenth, Brandon E. Williams eleventh, and last place uh, on the track, Scott Shane Duggerty in twelfth position. And uh, currently, I believe uh, Shane Duggerty is going to be lapped shortly. And you can see in the bottom side of the screen, Shane Duggerty in the blue car is going to be lapped shortly. So no lapped cars still in this race, but uh, that's going to change, I believe, which uh, Shane Duggerty, in my opinion, will be the only car, uh, will be the only car that is going to get lapped, because Brandon E. Williams is uh, 31 seconds behind these two, so um, only one car gets lapped in uh, 45 laps around Michigan. That's an uh, insane performance if you... Uh, compare this to the first two races of the season or any oval race in any official series. So excellent driving from throughout the field. Meanwhile it seems like Eric Hoff and Scott Eckridge has um, finished their uh, inside battle. It looks like they're going to be bringing their cars to the finish line in that order. Meanwhile the two car and the zero two car are still fighting their, fighting their uh, their own personal battle for fifth place and the guys in front of them uh, two Sams, Sam Watson and Sam Adams fighting for third place and uh, th this has been the story of this race like 30 laps straight so no, no real differences between these two runners and uh, will be interesting to see when it goes to the last laps if somebody is going to make a crazy dive bomb or anything but uh, meanwhile, in the lead, Scott Eckridge takes the lead back. That's an interesting one because uh, it, that takes away the speculations from uh, team orders, at least, because uh, Scott Eckridge regains the lead.
Meanwhile, as the uh, white flag is about to fly in the air, and uh, one more lap is uh, one more lap to go around Michigan Speedway. Scott Everett still in the lead with teammate Eric Huff right in his tail, eight hundredths of a second separating these guys on the on starting finish line. Behind them, uh, Sam Adams and Sam Watson going side by side, returns one and two, and the uh, 27 car of uh, 20, Sam Adams seems to find. Uh, Seems to carry enough speed to steal uh, third position in this race. Meanwhile, Scott Everidge somehow find enough speed to just pull a like. I believe Eric Huff. Eric Huff has run out of fuel. Oh my God, Eric Huff, the last straight, last, the very last straight of the race, 45 laps, and he runs out of fuel. He's he's going to be. Fourth position, uh, yeah, that was insanely bad finish for Eric Hoff, the, the the teammate of the winner Scott Eckridge, teammate of Scott Eckridge who just had an insane good pace throughout the race and the fuel window was just slightly too much for the, him and coming out of turn four he just runs out of fuel. Meanwhile, the two car and the zero two car coming into the line side by side and. Christopher Schell and Skyler Lewis just slam, it, slam themselves into the wall, but uh, the two car manages to be the, the victorious one out of these two. And it doesn't look like Christopher Schell will be losing sixth place. Yep. So that was a that was an insane one. Uh, maybe we're gonna see a replay of it. <coughs> exactly what went on. Uh, what went on there as uh, number two just carried much much more speed going through the corner and did just number two car had the superior speed but for some reason just goes slightly slightly too high and clips the zero two car's quarter panel and that was enough that was all it needed for uh, <laughs> not a photo finish this time but uh Exciting finish, uh, as to say the least. So, so 45 laps, full green race in the books in Michigan International Speedway in the Victory Lane Racing Season 3 race. The third race of the season. And Scott Eckridge, the 70 car, victorious around here. Sam Adams, with a lucky, lucky last straightaway, steals second place with 9.5 seconds behind. Sam Watson finishes third, 10.1 seconds behind. Eric Hoff, the uh, long-time second place runner, runs out of fuel in the last lap, coming out of turn four and finishes fourth, right behind Sam Watson. Uh, Skyler Lewis, the number two car, finishes fifth. Christopher Schella right behind him in sixth. Or, uh, well, it could have been another way around if... Uh, if uh, without the contact in the, in the last straightaway. Uh, Blake Bryant in 7th place, David Forge 8th, Corey Cart 9th, Brandon E. Williams 10th, Ryan Wills 11th, and the only car out of the 12th that gets slapped, Shane Duggerty one lap behind. So one lap, one car being lapped, no, no DNFs in this race, no cautions in this race, so excellent, excellent t uh, driving from uh, everyone in the field <coughs> and uh, currently we could uh, have a quick interview with uh, Christopher Shell of the zero two car uh, if he's on if he's around here Christopher can you read yep got you loud and clear sixth position and uh, good fight for quite a bit of time uh, quite a long time with Blake Bryant and Skyler Lewis there I want to talk us through uh, how you saw that a little bit of a uh, struggle there. Yeah, uh, it was a hard b fight between those guys. Uh, I saw Blake seem like he was either saving fuel or just fell off towards the middle to the end of the run. When I was racing at Skyler, uh, well, I was trying to maintain the second line because I felt like the second line had the most grip. And I was trying to pin him down to the inside line. And the inside line is where there's not much grip and it gets really loose down the very bottom line. So I knew that if I was able to have the second line there, I would have been able to keep him out and keep him back behind me. 
but when I tried to get up close to him and maybe you know, rub up against him, I actually t got us into a little trouble down coming to the finish. But it was all good racing. He was, he was all right. Uh, how was your uh, fu uh, fuel window in your uh, personal runner? Because uh, we saw Eric Huff uh, being in second place almost throughout the whole race, and uh, coming out of turn four in the last lap, he just ran out of fuel and dropped uh, two places. So how was your fuel? Uh, lap after lap, it was pretty much consistently about 0 0.9, 0 0.8 extra estimated laps. So I pr knew I was probably going to be able to make it if I was able to just shut it off a little bit and sometimes through 3 and 4 and 1 and 2. Uh, speaking of your uh, teammate David Forge, uh, he said to me in, uh, before, the, before uh, the start of the race that he was un uh, uncomfortable with the team setup. Uh, how did you see the setup? Personally, I found it was okay. It just took a while to get used to and get used to running this track with these cars. Uh, when I found that you need to really get into the corner a lot earlier than it seems like you need to. Otherwise, you'll find yourself upside down in the wall. Uh, by the way, how, would you, how did you see that uh, coming out of the turn four, the last last lap with uh, Skyler, Skyler Lewis uh, getting an excellent run on you and uh, in the inside line, and you just clipped each other uh, a little bit, and uh, that was all it, all it took for uh, not having a photo finish. So. How did you see that happen? Well, I saw Skylar getting a run coming through 3 and 4 down the bomb, and I knew he was going to go for it. So coming off of 4, I went back up off uh, my line, and then tried to get up as close to him as possible, get a side draft. And then I just nudged him just a little bit, and I couldn't handle him and spun out pretty much. Uh... Looking at the championship scoring, uh, you being the uh, championship leader before this race, and Danny Hugel, Davis Hessler, Camilla Kaiser uh, missing in this, missing from this race, Eric Hoff finishing uh, fourth place, two steps in front of you. But uh, you guys had a seven-point difference uh, before this race, so uh, with a qu quick calculation, I'd say you still maintain your lead in the championship. So, uh, uh, what's your, what are your uh, personal Feelings on the uh, next next upcoming race, which we I uh, think will be in uh, Richmond. Well, I just hope I'm able to keep up these consistent finishes in the top ten and up towards the front. That way, I know I'll be able to get a shot at the championship. I just want to be in the chase and have a shot at winning it. Because I know if I'm in chase, then it's pretty much guaranteed. I think that I have at least top five. Okay, so uh, good luck for you in the championship hunt, and uh, let's bring in uh, Scott Eckridge right now. Scott, can you read us? Yep, got a copy. Uh, congratulations for the victory, first of all, and uh, <laughs> you want to you want to talk us through the last five laps, uh, you and your teammate uh, having a good fight, and then Eric uh, getting a lead for a couple of laps, then you regaining it, and then Eric running out of fuel. So, <laughs> how did you see that happen? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, we were we were all saving from about lap 15 once we realized that we could probably make it, you know, on an entire run. So at the end, I mean, I I let him have like I don't know, like five seconds back, and we were just fighting out on the end, hoping we didn't run out. Uh, you pulled a, quite a bit of gap uh, at the beginning of the race, 4.4 uh, seconds before starting to lose uh, lose quite a bit of that gap to uh, to your teammate. Uh, were you, uh, were you getting so, uh, nervous about uh, not having cautions, I mean, since the field window was that close? Oh yeah, it was definitely in the back of my mind. I mean, uh, I didn't think it was going to happen, you know, especially after last week. So I was, you know, I was, we were all think, I think we were all kind of hoping for a caution there towards the end. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, I was just saying the same thing through the whole race that uh, it seems a uh, bit... Uh, Unreal to see, uh, comparing to Atlanta, this this race went uh, without any caution. So, um, were you basically? Uh, uh, did you set up your car for uh, like uh, short stints, or uh, were you prefer prepared to just go uh, full green? Uh, given Atlanta, you know the way it went towards the end of it last week, you know, 
barring the last caution. I thought I needed to go a little more long run this time. Uh, I went a little too short run, and it bit me. Uh, so I was running mine, my car a lot looser than my teammate was. Let's have a quick word of your uh, teammate, Eric Hoff. Uh, Eric, uh, second, guaranteed second place changed to uh, fourth place within the last couple of hundred yards. So uh, how did that feel? Uh, it was kind of a bummer. I mean, I knew it was going to be close, but I'd rather run out five laps short than that close, I guess. So, uh, you saw your teammates slowing down quite a bit in the uh, in the mid stage of the race. Uh, you gained 4.4 uh, seconds back. Uh, were you uh, were you any worried about having a fuel problems before the uh, very last laps? Uh, I knew it was going to be close, and I wasn't really, I didn't really push it hard for that whole majority of the race, and then, you know, Scott got, a, Scott kind of got away as I saved, and then I got Scott back as he started to save, and as I got closer to him, I guess my eyes got big, and I drove it a little more than I needed to, and ran about a half a lap short. What about the, uh... Uh, upcoming race in Richmond, 50 laps. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, how you're gonna? You're confident that you're gonna set up the car beast just as fast as around here? Uh, well, last week was kind of a bummer. It it just set up didn't last very long. But uh, hopefully, I mean, it's a short track, and there's all kinds of variables when it comes to short tracks. And your your fellow racer that's around you means about as much to as as your setup does. So. Hopefully it's uh it's a decent race for me, hopefully. And uh you're still uh fourth position and you still gained uh two places. You came uh two places in front of your uh main <laughs> competitor in the championship, Christopher Shella. So uh all the other guys in front of you are behind you in the championship, so um what are your thoughts on that? I mean you're you're happy with the fourth place, or uh, I mean, oh, naturally, it's a, it's a bummer to have your fuel run out and coming uh, in fourth instead of second, but still you gained positions or, and uh, championship points compared to Christopher. So uh, you got to be happy in terms of that. Yeah, it's it's nice to at least be there. I mean, fourth is better than last, but not as good as first. You know, to, uh, you take what you can get. Sometimes would have been nice if I could have got another half lap and made it a second, but like I said, sometimes you just take what you can get. Yeah, and uh, let's drag in the uh, two two Sams that uh, were fighting each other through the whole race. Sam Adams and Sam Watson. Can you guys read me? Yes, we do. Loud and clear. So, uh... <laughs> You guys at least didn't have a boring race at all. I mean, every lap, uh, turn, going into turn one, the 27 car took a high side line, and then uh, 28 car took a low side line. So <laughs> you guys were uh, all over the place of each other uh, through the whole race. So you guys must have had a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, especially how we were getting sideways constantly. Uh, yeah, how did you... Times. How did you two see the uh, 14 cars just slowing down when he uh, came into the main straightaway? I mean, four tenths behind, uh, finished four tenths behind uh, you, Sam Watson. So uh, <laughs> that must have been a fun, fun sight to see for you guys. Oh, well, well, I, I was up on the. We were gonna make it, and uh, I just barely cleared him by about 100 yards. Yeah, when we came across the line, I was sitting up going, "Yeah, yeah." And uh, you guys seem to be, uh, well, at least uh, Ad Sam Adams uh, out of the two Sams is in the 12th position in the championship. And this, uh, this race did a pretty good job for you uh, in terms of cha gaining uh, places in the championship because the only guy in front of you is uh, t only two spots in front of you in the championship as well. So uh, what are your thoughts on uh, for the rest of the championship and uh, going into Richmond? Yeah, you know, I'm just going to keep trying my best and... Hopefully try to keep on getting top fives. Hopefully we'll win at Richmond. And uh, for uh, the uh, Sam Watson part, it uh, seems to be like the first points for you in the championship. So uh, what are your thoughts on uh, continuing the uh, point scoring run? 
Oh, I like that we just especially that I haven't been here in two races. We came out with a strong run and uh, it was real good. Back in Richmond. Or uh, would you rather hope that uh, Richmond would not be in the calendar? Uh, Richmond is one of my favorite tracks. It's real fun, and I think we can have a decent run there as long as we stay out of trouble. What about Scott? How do you see uh, the upcoming race in uh, next week? Uh, Richmond? It, I don't know. Oh, it's going to be a crapshoot. Uh, short track. you got to watch the people running in the back of you. So I I'm optimistic for it. Uh, I usually run pretty good there. What about uh, Christopher? Uh, having uh, seen you, uh, you guys do well in the Atlanta and uh, Daytona, and now uh, not not that shiny performance for, from the t uh, team wise, but uh, you looking forward to Richmond? Uh, I'm not sure sure about me, but I know David's been looking forward to these short tracks. He says he's really feels like he's got a good feeling about all the short tracks on the schedule. Um, me, on the other hand, I prefer the speedways, so. I don't expect to be running up in the top five. And Eric, what are your thoughts on the uh, next race? Uh, I like short tracks. Short tracks are fun. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Richmond necessarily, but short tracks are always a whole lot funner. I I don't have a whole lot of laps there. I I, I couldn't give you the slightest idea on where I'm at is is speed, but you know as long as it's a as long as it's a good, fun, clean, competitive race, then I'm happy. Yeah, the finishing good, just icing on the cake. So that pretty much sums up the broadcast for tonight. We thank uh, Eric Hoff, uh, Christopher Shella, Sam Adams, Sam Watson, Scott Eckrich. Thanks a lot for the interview, guys. And uh, thanks naturally to all the other guys in the field who gave us a clean 45 laps of green flag racing around Michigan International Speedway. I will, I'm Yoni Beckman, and this was Glacier Racing's live broadcast of the third race of Victory Lane Racing season. Join us again next week for uh, 50 laps of Richmond Speedway. Until now, goodbye. <laughs>